having looked at various ways of uh, writing finite difference approximations for any derivative of any order to a given degree of accuracy and having looked at uh, possible complications arising from uh, cross derivatives and also from time derivatives. We can claim now that we are in a position to take up our governing equation, the template uh, generic scalar transport equation and then write uh, uh, a finite difference approximation for each term and then uh, uh, put it convert it into an algebraic equation and proceed with the CFD solution. So, at this stage we may be able to stake a claim that we know how to do a CFD solution for a generic transport equation, but is that confidence uh, justified or is it misplaced. Let us test ourselves by taking a, a, a few simple examples and see how much we can claim to know that we are capable of uh, uh, discretizing uh, properly. So, we we'll go back to our scalar transport equation containing the accumulation term, the advection term, the diffusion term and the source term and out of this we we'll make a simple uh, approximation which is one dimensional diffusionless and sourceless flow. And for good measure we say that rho is constant and u is constant <coughs> and we say that rho is 1 in which case we can write this equation because it is diffusionless this term goes to 0 because the source is less it is sourceless that is 0 and because it is one dimension we have the governing equation reducing to with uh, uh, rho equal to 1 dou phi by dou t plus dou by dou x of u phi equal to 0 and we also say that uh, let us take u to be a given constant and therefore, we consider the very simple equation one can say that this has some <coughs> resemblance to the governing equation and it captures some of the physics that is contained in the original equation and the physics that contains is uh, a change of scalar because of advection uh, is what is contained in this. So, it is a diffusionless sourceless uh, one dimensional situation where u is not changing significantly with respect to x during that time of interest. So, under those kind of approximations we can come up with this simple form <coughs> and we want to test our discretization of equation finite writing finite difference approximation capability and knowledge against this simple equation. Now, the simple equation is not uh, 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 complete without a statement of the, of the uh, uh, boundary conditions and initial conditions we can see that this is a one dimensional equation and it is like a hyperbolic equation because it has a velocity with which a scalar, scalar is being transported in the x direction and therefore, that it has uh, if you consider the one dimensional case x and as a function of time. If you had an initial scalar uh, as the variation of phi with respect to x is if it initially you had for example, a, a square pulse here then after some time this would be moving in the horizontal direction <coughs> retaining 
the same form because it is there is no diffusion in this and then with further progression of time for example, T T 1 and T 2 it will be something like this. So, it is moving in the x in the x direction at a speed of u this is what is being represented by this so as if you had a, this is a highway and you had a, a lorry which is containing uh, that particular scalar and the lorry is moving at a constant speed. So, wherever the lorry is that is where the scalar is and outside the lorry the scalar value is 0 and the scalar is actually uh, contained in a uh, in a tightly packed container. So, that it does not diffuse out. So, in this on this highway the position of the uh, of the scalar is associated with the lorry and as the lorry moves along at a certain speed the scalar position also becomes non zero <coughs> at the position where the lorry is uh, present. And this is what is contained in this equation and that is a true solution. So, we want to get uh, a numerical solution for uh, this equation using the finite difference approximation and the corresponding thing. So, we have to write a finite difference approximation for it. In uh, the last class we have seen that when you are dealing with a time derivative and a space derivative when your uh, governing equation contains both time derivatives and space derivatives you have an option of choosing an explicit method or an implicit method where in the explicit method the value of the variable at a time n plus 1 is expressed explicitly in terms of the values of the variables at neighboring locations and also at the same location at earlier times. So, that you can march forward from one point to another point in the positive x direction uh, and get a solution. So, that is a, a simple solution whereas, an implicit method will require us to at a particular time at a particular time level it will require us to uh, assemble all the equations for all the points in the x domain and then form a matrix and then we have to do a matrix solution. So, obviously, the explicit method is much simpler. So, we will try to use an explicit differencing for the time derivative and again we want to uh, uh, use a forward differencing because that is a most obvious thing. So, we can write we can discretize the domain in the x direction into i i plus 1 i minus 1 with the spacing of delta x. And similarly, the time domain is also discretized in delta t with n n plus 1 and so on uh, in this way. So, using the standard notation that phi of x y x t is represented as phi i n, where i stands for x i which is x naught plus i delta x and t n stands for t naught plus n delta t n minus 1 delta t. Okay. So, using that notation here we can write a forward differencing approximation phi i n plus 1 minus phi i n by delta t plus terms of the order of delta t. We know that this is a first order scheme and here we are considering u to be constant u times and here we can use uh, space derivative. So, we can make use of central differencing we can make use of uh, uh, for example, the same forward differencing for this. So, we can write phi i plus 1 minus phi i by delta x equal to 0. Okay. And since we are making it explicit these are evaluated at nth time step. So, this is uh, uh, a discretization of a governing equation simple governing equation 
using forward differences for both. Now, the reason why we have chosen forward differences in the time domain is that we know that this is an initial value problem. So, we know that at n equal to 1, we know the entire solution as part of the uh, initial condition and if you know that, then we can get n plus 1 in terms of uh, n values. If you used a central differencing for time phi i n plus 1 minus phi i n minus 1 by 2 delta t plus which is second order in space uh, in uh, time second order accurate in time plus we can again use central differencing here phi i plus 1 minus phi i minus 1 by 2 delta x equal to 0. So, this is another possibility and using implicit method we can uh, come up with this. We understand that this is first order accuracy and this is second order accuracy. This is another possible way of doing this. Okay. But if you look at this solution, this is not a self starting solution because in order to get phi i n plus 1, you need to have you need to know the value of phi i n minus 1. So, that means that you must know the value 2 time steps in advance. So, when you want to compute for the first time step, this formula cannot be used. So, for n equal to 1, we know the solution and n equal to 2, if you want to apply this then we do not know the value of uh, 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 this one. So, this is not a self starting thing we have to use something like this in order to get the solution here and then for the next time step we have to. Do. So, we will for the time being we will avoid that complication and stick to forward differencing in time. Okay. So, now we can uh, rewrite this in terms of uh, phi i n plus 1 can be is given by phi i n minus we have u delta t by delta x times phi i plus 1 n minus phi i n. So, this is the resulting template or the formula a recurrence formula by which we can evaluate the value of phi i at n plus 1 time step in terms of the values at nth time step at different spatial positions. And the factors which come into the equation that is u which is the velocity at which the lorry is going and then the delta t and delta x which are the discretization points. And we can say that this is we can call this method as forward in time forward in space scheme. Okay, so, we have for this simple equation, we have come up with a forward in time, forward in space scheme to evaluate phi i uh, n plus 1 in terms of uh, all the other things. And since this is an explicit scheme, we will put as x f t f s uh, explicit scheme. Now, this is not the only way that we can do this. We have just now seen the central in time and central in space and for the time being we have abandoned that, but we can also make changes here without uh, uh, affecting uh, the rest of thing. For example, we can say that we will still retain phi i n plus 1 minus phi i n by delta t, because this seems to be the most logical uh, way of going forward in time given that we have an initial condition and we can uh, go forward with that. And for the space derivative, we do not have any constraints that we have to use only the backward space uh, uh, forward in space. We can also make use of backward in space phi i n minus phi i n uh, 
phi i minus 1 n divided by delta x and this is equal to 0 and we can call this as forward in time backward in space explicit and we can also make use of central <coughs> in in space plus u times phi i plus 1 n minus phi i minus 1 n divided by 2 delta x equal to 0 and we can call this as f t c s central in space explicit. So, for the same uh, equation for the same simple equation we can readily write down three different schemes and uh, they share the advantage that these are very simple schemes and we can march forward hop from one point to another point in time. It does not require much of computation as such and you can do this in uh, uh, any uh, database program like uh, even excel type of uh, Microsoft excel or any other equivalent program can also be used to do this without having to write a program. So, it is as simple as that. Okay. Now, what is the difference between these things? These are different ways of evaluating uh, uh, the derivatives. There is a, a, a forward in time here for this and for the space derivative the three of them differ in the way that we treat the space derivative. Here we are making use of forward uh, in space which is first order accurate and here we are using backward in space which is also first order accurate. So, one would say from the accuracy point of view either the F T F S or the F T B S scheme are not different and this is the third one is central in space. So, this is second order accurate. So, one would expect uh, more accuracy from this method as compared to this method or the other method. So, in that sense from what we know of finite difference methods and the approximation of a derivative in terms of finite differences we are expecting an equivalent solution from this method and this method and a better solution from this method for any of the uh, uh, for the parameters that we are looking at. Okay. So, and the parameters are u delta t and delta x u is fixed for us delta t and delta x are our choices and for a given initial condition and boundary condition. Okay. So, with these things we can now test uh, uh, what kind of solution we get and as a boundary condition here this is a hyperbolic equation we need to give the boundary condition at x equal to 0 and we can say that x equal to 0 phi is always equal to 0. Okay. So, here it is 0 and even at this time at t 1 it is 0 and at t 2 this is 0. So, we have the and the initial condition is a pulse like this. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, solution that we are expecting and if this is the initial condition we are expecting our numerical computed solution to match with this expectation and that this pulse will move in the x direction at a speed of u. <coughs> okay. Now, we want to see to what extent the three different schemes will match the expected solution. When we want to attempt a numerical solution we have to specify everything. So, we cannot say u here and we cannot say a pulse we have to give values to this. So, we will take u to be 1 meter per second okay. and we can take a <coughs> we need to take uh, a total length of the domain for example, it may be some uh, 1 meter okay. uh, let us say 1 meter and we can take delta x to be say 0.1 meters. So, that we have 10 spaces within this or we can take it 0.05 uh, uh, it is up to us as to how much we can take and delta t 
is also a variable thing and we can take delta t to be 0 0.1 second just as a uh, we can vary we can vary these parameters and examine what kind of solution we are getting and we also have to have a bound any in initial condition and we say that the value of phi is if you say that this is 0 and 1 here and this is 0 0.5 0.25 and 0.75 and this is equal to 1. So, phi is equal to 1 between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and it is 0 throughout everywhere else. So, phi is equal to uh, 1 for 0.2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0.3 and it is equal to 0 otherwise at t equal to 0. So, this is the initial condition and we say that phi 0 at any t is 0 this is the boundary condition. Okay. And for the sake of ease of computation, we can define, so we can see that we are getting this parameter here. We can say that sigma here is this parameter which is u delta t by delta x and we will see that this is called the current number. after uh, a famous mathematician who worked on this in uh, 1920s and uh, published a paper uh, uh, on something similar to this in late 20s. And we can see that this current number will also come here and will also come here. So, let us write down <coughs> uh, simplified formulas for this. We can write F T B S F T F S explicit as phi i n plus 1 is equal to phi i n minus sigma times phi i plus 1 n minus phi i n and f t b s explicit will give us we take it to the other side this becomes minus here okay this is minus uh, uh, this is plus here uh, mm. okay so this is phi i n plus 1 equal to phi i n minus sigma into phi i n minus phi i minus 1 n so we take this to the other side so that becomes minus u delta t by delta x which is our sigma phi i minus phi i minus 1 and f t c s explicit will give us phi i n plus 1 equal to phi i n same as uh, this one plus u delta t by 2 delta x. So, that is minus sigma by 2 times phi i plus 1 n minus phi i minus 1. So, these are the formulas using which we can calculate phi at different i locations okay at any given time starting with an initial condition which is given by this and we want to see at different times whether or not this initial square pulse representing uh, uh, for example uh, a lorry is moving in the positive x direction whether or not moving it is in the positive x direction without changing its shape 
because there is no diffusion and also at the speed which is given by u which is equal to 1 meter per second. So, if the solution is correct then it should be this pulse here which is centered between 0.2 and 0.3 should be moving at the rate of 1 meter per second okay, uh, uh, in the positive x direction. So, that at uh, for example, 0.5 seconds it will have come from 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.7 to 0.8 that is the kind of solution that we are expecting. We can we need to have a computer solution we look at uh, uh, what the computer solution shows for these three different cases. Okay. So, this is the problem that we are considering we have taken u equal to 1 meter per second and the initial condition that is phi for all x uh, at time equal to 0 is given by a function f of x where f of x is equal to 1 for x between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and it is equal to 0 otherwise and the true solution is that the initial bit uh, pulse gets converted in the x direction at a speed of 1 meter per second and the solution at any time x of t is equal to solution of uh, x uh, phi at x minus a t where a is 1 meter per second which is a speed. Okay, so, and that is what is shown here phi versus x if this is the pulse then it travels at different times in the forward x direction. Now, what is the solution that we get from the three different methods? So, this is an f t b s solution that is forward in time and backward in space solution for different values of sigma at a time of 0 0.1 seconds. So, in getting these solutions we have taken delta x to be 0 0.01. So, that is 0 0.01 so it is 1 centimeter and we have adjusted the value of delta t such that the sigma the current number takes the value of 1 here and 0.5 here and 0.25. Given that current number is u delta t by delta x and u is equal to 1 when your sigma is equal to 1 the delta t is equal to delta x numerically. So, that is 0 0.01 seconds and in this particular case when sigma is 0 0.5 delta t is reduced by 2 and it is 0 0.005 seconds and for sigma equal to 0 0.25 we are going even uh, lesser values of uh, delta t. So, that is 0 0.0025 seconds. So, for these three different values we are using smaller and smaller uh, delta t. Now, what is the implication of that? We are doing a first order differencing in time. Okay, so, the uh, forward difference in time is first order accurate in time and we know that the accuracy of the approximation uh, increases as delta t is reduced. So, we expect a priori that when sigma is reduced while keeping u and delta x constant which is what we have done. Therefore, as delta t is reduced for lower and lower values of current number we expect more and more accurate solution. So, that is what this particular uh, uh, trial is about and we are looking at the shape of the pulse the predicted shape of the pulse at a time of 0 0.1 seconds. So, this 0 0.1 seconds is arrived at for a current number of 1 it has taken 10 time steps to reach this. In the case of 0 0.5 current number it has taken 20 time steps to reach this and for 0 0.25 it has taken 40 time steps to reach this. So, we are not comparing the solution at so many number of time steps, but at the same time elapsed from the beginning uh, of the pulse. So, we expect we are comparing apples and uh, with apples by uh, doing this by comparing at a fixed time and not at a fixed number of uh, uh, time steps, because for each case for each sigma value since we have fixed delta x and u delta t is changing. So, we should not compare at different time steps, but we should compare at the same elapsed time from the beginning and that is 0 0.1 seconds. 
So, what is the solution looks like this f of uh, x at time of 0 0.1 seconds is what is plotted here. So, that is the uh, value of phi over the x and we have zoomed in on the region between 0 0.1 and 0 0.4 because before 0 0.1 and beyond 0 0.4 it is 0 and any change is happening over uh, this particular range. And we also notice that initially we had a pulse which was centered between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 uh, so it is centered about 0 0.15 and it is moving at 1 meter per second therefore in 0 0.1 seconds it would have moved 0 0.1 uh, uh, meters to the x direction. So now we should be expecting a pulse which is centered which is displaced by 0 0.1 meters from the original uh, solution. So, the original solution had a pulse centered at 0 0.15. Now, we expect it to have moved by 0 0.1 to reach at 0 0.25. So, we are expecting the pulse to be centered at 0 0.25 which is what we are actually getting. Okay, we see that in all the cases either we look at this or this one we are, we are getting a pulse which is centered at 0 0.25 which means that the computed pulse is traveling in the positive x direction at the correct speed. Now, but what about the accuracy part we are expecting better accuracy with 0 0.25 current number because the time step is less and worse accuracy if there is anything uh, at a current number of 1 whereas what we are getting here in this is that the solution obtained with the Courant number of 1 seems to be more like the square pulse that we started out with at 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 it is more smeared. Okay, you can see that here it should be 0, but you have a value here. So, there seems to be some the diffusion of this particular pulse which is making it from a square shape into something like a, a gradually sloping hill type of uh, uh, variation more like a normal distribution. Okay. So, one can see that the predicted or the computed results are counter intuitive counter intuitive in the sense that we expect more accurate results with smaller current number because the delta t is less. So, we expect more uh, accuracy, but we are not getting that here. And and uh, uh, the pulse that uh, we should be getting as a square pulse is not retained as a square pulse although we have considered a diffusionless equation uh, in our equation uh, there is no diffusion the computed solution seems to be showing some diffusion uh, type of uh, behavior for certain Courant numbers 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 but not uh, uh, for a core number of 1 and not only that the diffusion is more appears to be more for a smaller core number than for a, a slightly higher core number of 0.5. So, it is we can see that the computed solution is showing a different kind of physics compared to what is expected and what we are uh, hoping to get in our computed solution. And finally, because we are uh, smearing it the pulse uh, the peak pulse value is decreasing with increasing sigma all at the same time of 0 0.1 seconds okay, during which it has travelled from 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. So, this is what we are getting from the FTBS scheme forward in time and backward in space. Now, what about the other two schemes we have FT f s and f t c s. Now, if you go to f t b s solution uh, uh, for even larger values of uh, Courant number because we seem to be getting better solution with uh, uh, increasing value of Courant number. So, what can we get when we increase the value of sigma. 
So, this is a solution that we have got from FTBS scheme for three different values of sigma and the we seem to be getting a better solution as sigma is increasing and uh, uh, paradoxically as delta t is increasing. Now, what do we get if sigma is increased more? So, here we have solutions three different solutions the solution for sigma equal to 1 and sigma increased by about 10 percent here and by about 12 percent here. Okay. So, there is a small increase in delta t as compared to this and this and we are again looking at uh, uh, the solution predicted solution at 0.1 seconds. Now, what we see is something very uh, disturbing and very strange. Here we see that the function at uh, the same time is now becoming negative it should not be negative and it looks like uh, uh, something erratic behavior is there at with 0.1 we still have a solution like this okay, we can see that here it is uh, 1 and the next point it is 0. So, it is uh, actually a sharp change which is not covered. So, that looks like the correct solution with sigma equal to 1, but when we increase del the delta t by about 11 percent then we get a solution which is shown by the dashed line and it is showing a non zero value at point 0.1 whereas it should be 0 here and it is increasing and then coming down like this and here it is becoming negative and then it is going like this and when we increase the delta t by not by 11 percent, but by 12.5 percent we are getting even stranger result the value is negative here shooting up to greater than plus 4 and immediately falling down to less than minus 4 and then it is showing this kind of erratic behavior and we can see that the shape of the pulse which should be a square and the amplitude of the pulse are predicted very poorly for values of sigma which are slightly greater than 1. Okay. And how do we get this values of sigma increase values of sigma just by changing the value of delta t by about 10 percent or 12 percent then what we are getting where we are getting at the uh, best solution. So, the value the, the computed solution seems to be so sensitive to the value of delta t that we have chosen for this particular uh, uh, scheme. So, what about the other schemes? If you look at F t C s solution, C s is central in space. So, we are expecting better accuracy as compared to the F t B s which is only first order accurate and this is second order ac uh, accurate in space and we are looking at spatial variation. So, we hope that we will get much better solution but our hopes are actually belied because for the same three Kuran numbers that we originally looked at, looked at for sigma equal to 1 and 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 okay, we are getting uh, uh, results which are not at all uh, resembling the kind of expected square pulse we are uh, centered around 0 0.25 that uh, we are hoping to see. We are hoping to see a uh, a pulse here located uh, between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 over this region with an amplitude of 1 and what we are getting here is an amplitude which goes up to something like 7 here and minus 5 here and is showing non zero values which are well uh, beyond the expected uh, zone of non zero variation. So, this is clearly not correct and the solution is also uh, showing increased erraticness, increased values of these things when uh, lambda is increased, okay, when the Kura number uh, sigma is increased for sigma less than 1. And what about the other method FTFS forward in time and forward in space? And here again we are looking at sigma less than 1. And now we are looking at uh, elapsed time of only 0 0.05 seconds. The reason being that even for this short times, half the time as what we are looking earlier, the computed value has an amplitude of going up to 400, whereas the expected amplitude is only uh, 1.45. Okay, so we can see that here 
again for different values of Kura number 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 1 we are getting very erratic solution we should be seeing something centered between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 with an amplitude of 1 and we are getting highly unacceptable values at uh, these and here we see that as delta t is, is reduced further from 1 to 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 the amplitude of this pulsation is increasing much more. Okay. So, here we have solutions which are which are uh, uh, behaving very erratically compared to uh, what we are expecting. So, our first foray into a computer solution of a very simple equation has proved to be close to a disaster. We have considered the simple one dimensional wave equation which is not as complicated as the whole equation that we are uh, uh, trying to solve. And we have simplified it such that u is constant and we have written three eminently possible finite difference approximations containing certain distinctive features that we are expecting that is uh, with uh, one has more accuracy than the other and therefore, the solution should be more accurate. And we have chosen reasonable uh, uh, values for phi and uh, all these things we have chosen a domain in which we are expecting the solution to go from here to here okay so that there is no bound effect of the end conditions uh, coming into picture so in spite of this carefully chosen simplified case the solution that we are getting from the all the three that we have considered uh, uh, is very poor except for a specific value of the current number which is equal to 1 only when the current number is equal to 1 we got a solution which 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 is matching with the expected solution that it is traveling at constant speed of u in the x direction with an unchanging amplitude and shape. We found that when the current number is reduced thereby employing a smaller delta t which should give us a more accurate solution we found that when sigma is reduced with the FTBS scheme we still got a, a reasonable uh, uh, reasonable solution reasonable in the sense that we got a solution which is propagating in the positive x direction at the speed of u. But instead of getting a square pulse we are getting a smeared pulse more like a Gaussian distribution which means that there is more like uh, a diffusion which is entering in our uh, computed solution whereas the true equation does not have any diffusion term and not only that as we decrease the sigma further by decreasing the delta t further that is by making the approximation here uh, more accurate we got more smearing okay, which is a counterintuitive part with FTFS scheme which should behave roughly in the same way as the FTBS scheme as far as the accuracy is concerned we are getting a, a totally different solution. We got a solution which is nowhere uh, close to what we expect okay. In, we did not even get the sense of propagation of the uh, of the um, of the lorry or the wave correctly and not only that the value of phi which should be 1 we are getting as plus 400 and minus 400. So, that is totally unacceptable for the three different values of sigma it did not seem to be very sensitive to the value of sigma in the sense that no matter what uh, value of sigma we used we are getting uh, a clearly unsatisfactory solution. Now, if we look when we looked at FTCS method which is second order accurate in, in space therefore, it should give us uh, a better solution especially for the spatial variation we again had a shock there for any value of sigma we are getting a solution which is not as good as what we are getting with the first order accurate solution. So, <coughs> the solution that we are getting to the simple equation using 
straightforward uncomplicated discretization uh, method finite difference approximations is giving uh, uh, results which are uh, not correct even with a very few number of steps it is not that there is some sort of a round off error which is actually spoiling the results because the solution of plus or minus 400 of phi that we got for FTFS scheme was obtained at as short a time as 0 0.05 seconds. So, that is within 5 time steps the solution exploded from the initial value of 5 to 400. It is clearly not because of any kind of round off errors. Round off errors have a tendency to accumulate over a large number of uh, repeated calculations. So, what we find damaging in this, what we find unnerving in this is the fact that the solution, the approximation which is mathematically equivalent to uh, uh, the true solution in the limiting case of delta t and delta x going to 0 is exhibiting uh, a behavior which is sensitive to the very parameters that we are choosing that we need to choose when we attempt a computer solution. Okay, the parameters that we need to choose are delta x and delta t because that is all that is there and the other parameters that we choose is what kind of approximations that we make. Okay, so, if we go for a more accurate solution by going for a, a central in space which seems to be a reasonable approximation we are not getting any better accuracy. If you are decreasing the value of delta t, we are not getting be any better accuracy. Okay. So, in that sense for, for the choices that we have, for the choices that we make are profoundly influencing the solution that we are uh, getting uh, in, in this simple case, in this very simple case with, without any kind of nonlinearity that one can uh, uh, expect to complicate the matters. Okay. And that too without going through a large number of repetitive calculations. So, the solution is blowing up just like that. So, we need to have a more systematic way in which we can identify what kind of parameters that uh, we need to have uh, so that we can get a satisfactory solution. So, our initial bravado that we are now able to solve right finite difference approximations for these things and then go for a solution is now totally misplaced because even for a subset of this equation we are not able to get uh, a method of, uh, uh, of uh, finite difference a combination of finite difference uh, approximations which is giving us a reasonably satisfactory solution. So, we need to understand more about the nature of the discretized equation because there is nothing wrong with the actual equation. Okay. This is a simple equation which has a solution like this. So, the numerical the partial differential equation here is very clear and the boundary conditions and initial conditions have are nothing at fault here. It is just that the approximations that we are making here are really causing all the problems. So, this is where we need to be careful about what kind of approximations that we make in order to get a computed solution and then what kind of values that we choose for delta x and delta t. In this particular case we have fixed the value of delta x and we have changed the value of delta t. You can fix the value of delta t and change the value of delta x and see what will happen and you can change both of them and see whether you can get a satisfactory solution. But unless we have a systematic way of analyzing this we cannot go on trying different values of delta x and delta t because this is a case which, uh, which is one dimensional. Okay. In the general case we may have a three dimensional thing, we cannot arbitrarily keep on trying all possible values of delta x and delta y and delta z and delta t. Okay. So, that kind of thing is not really at any kind of trial and error approach to finding the right combination of parameters or the right combination of uh, the uh, difference approximations is not uh, appropriate. So, we have to have a systematic approach to identifying the kind of discretization uh, method for the overall equation. Okay. 
what we need to understand here, what we need to emphasize here is that taken in themselves a finite difference approximation of the first derivative in the form of this or the spatial derivative here in the form of forward differencing or backward differencing or central differencing they are okay. It is putting them together into one equation and then looking at the evolution of phi subject to both the terms is causing problems. Okay. So, what kind of combination of discretization methods and approaches is uh, going to give us to a proper solution okay, uh, or a satisfactory solution for different cases is something that has to be systematically analyzed and only when we do that we can uh, hope to get uh, uh, hope to have the assurance of getting uh, a solution even as we set out to uh, uh, write uh, the solution scheme for a phi equal to b and so on. So, that sort of analysis of the discretized equations is necessary and that is uh, 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 an important step before we go from the uh, partial differential equation to spatial discretization to finite difference approximation and finally, to, uh, the solution of a phi equal to b. Okay. So, the solution of a phi equal to b must be preceded by uh, an analysis to make sure that we are solving the right combination of finite difference approximations for the governing equation. So, this is what we mean by analysis of the discretized equations and uh, the analysis is very well laid out and clearly uh, defined and understood for a linear equation. Okay. When, when we are dealing with the linear partial differential equation then the analysis is uh, really uh, understood, but for a nonlinear uh, kind of uh, uh, equation which is what we normally have in the momentum equation when you put u i here then this term becomes nonlinear and when you have a diffusivity here which may depend on uh, uh, some other things then it may become uh, uh, nonlinear. Okay. So, there is a possible source of nonlinearity there is there is nonlinearity in the advection term when we consider the momentum equation there is a possible source of nonlinearity here and there is a possible source of nonlinearity for a nonlinear governing equation we do not yet have a, a, a foolproof method of uh, analysis okay but for a linear equation we have a foolproof method of analysis which tells us a priori whether or not we are going to get a, a proper solution okay we will see in the next lecture what we mean by a proper solution and how we can assess a given discretization scheme for this properness of uh, the expected solution expected computed solution.